Resuming debate, the Honourable Member for South Okanagan, West Kootenay. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'm uh, honoured to rise as well today to speak to this important issue, and I thank the member from Caribou Prince George for highlighting the tragedy of PTSD and putting forward concrete solutions to improve the treatment of PTSD in Canada and how we can support the men and women who suffer from it. And today I will be very brief as we all want this measure to move quickly through the House. And since time is of the essence, I would simply like to recount the story of uh, one friend of mine, a veteran, and his recent experiences with the tragic consequences of how we treat people with PTSD today. This man suffers from both pain from his injuries and PTSD from his experiences. He was once on a regimen of over 30 pills a day. That treatment was ineffective, so he turned to medical marijuana and found that that turned his life around. He could once again take part in his community and enjoy life. But last month, Veterans Affairs Canada cut back the amount that, of cannabis that veterans could use from 10 grams a day to three. My friend was taking eight grams. Since that action, he has suffered the worst six weeks of his life. His nightmares have returned. He's only getting three hours of sleep a night. He repeatedly broke down crying while t telling me his story. He was told that this cut was implemented because there wasn't enough science to support the higher doses. Instead, he's being offered to take part in a trial using psilocybin or MDMA. Why can't he use the cannabis dose that gave him his life back instead of trying new, stronger hallucinogens? He's also unwilling to go back to the mix of opioids and alcohol and the dangerous, dysfunctional life that that produces. He is told that he could get a letter of exception to allow him to go back to his former dose of cannabis, but he needs to get that letter signed by a specialist willing and able to see him. The earliest appointment he can arrange is in September, and that will require travel across the province at his expense. So that's a minimum of four more months of hell for him to satisfy pointless bureaucracy, and he would have to repeat that every year. And this just doesn't affect him. There have been three suicides in his network of PTSD sufferers that use cannabis since this cutback was implemented. Three lives needlessly taken because Veterans Affairs refused to listen to the men and women suffering from PTSD. So Mr. Speaker, I'll end there, but I'd like to just simply repeat that plea that Veterans Affairs should listen to and work constructively with the men and women suffering from PTSD. And I wholeheartedly support this bill because it will help that process. Thank you.